Hi guys, today I'm not as energetic as you might think because I got COVID. Now I'm gonna tell you my experience with COVID after two Moderna vaccination. So yes, today I'm not gonna talk about diabetes. As you know, I do not have diabetes, but I want to talk to all my audience who have diabetes, pre-diabetes or insulin resistance. And if you are still hesitant to take the vaccine, I will tell you how horrible that virus is, even on people who catch the virus after even vaccination. Now you're gonna be asking right now, why my doctor caught the vaccine, the virus, even after his vaccinations. Now, I'll touch base on that. I'll tell you all the symptoms that I went through. As you can see, I still have a little bit of a voice problem. I'm still affected, but I am 90% better. It has been over 10 days now. So I'm hoping that someone with vaccination, I'm hoping that I'm not uh, shedding viruses anymore. However, I will never ever go anywhere without a mask. And I made that mistake and I'll tell you why I got it. So. Guys, girls, ladies and gentlemen, I am a healthcare worker. I have been seeing patients since day one COVID hit this country. I took all the measures, I wore my mask, and finally the day came and I did my shot. Well, after my shot, after my second shot, I started to get a real relax. It gave me a lot of confidence that, well, it protects, especially Moderna vaccine, protects you up to 95%. So I said, you know, what the hell? You know, I'll just relax a little bit. My patient said, oh, this is too hard for me. Can I please bring that down? And they're like, oh, I can hear you, I can hear you. And then I bring it down. And then I start shaking hands. And the worst is I start going to big events. And I think that's where I got hit. So my family came from Turkey. They wanted to visit me, rightfully. Especially they wanted to see the, the grandson and you know, you know how it goes. And I, since they're my parents, I wanted to take them out and about. And, and we started going to places. And the latest place that I remember being crowded is, you know, the Orlando Park. You know how they are. It's super crowded. We were in a Discovery Co. At some point, people were old because, because of a storm. They took people out of the waters and people were on top of each other. You know, there was no distancing, nobody wearing masks. And, you know, I, I felt like, you know what? I didn't catch it for two years now. I don't think I'm going to catch it from now on. And guess what? Exactly after three, four days later of that event, I started having a tickly throat. I, I didn't, I didn't mind, and I kept going because I don't know. It's nothing. It's, I'm vaccinated. I'm not. I'm not having running a fever. And the next thing is, my sore throat is getting worse. I'm still functional. I don't mind. And the next thing is, I start coughing. Hmm. Like that puts me to uh, doubt. And I take myself to urgent care, and I get tested. Guess what happens? Well, I get tested negative. I go back to work. Well, the next day, I wake up with a very high fever at 102. My body, I can't even move. I feel like I was hit by a truck and I couldn't even lift anything. Forget about exercise. I couldn't even lift my child and I was so weak. Now, I was also affected in my GI tract. I had a diarrhea, not so after. I had severe nausea that I didn't experience for years and years to come. So the nausea was extremely severe and that's because this damn virus unfortunately has receptors all over your body and that includes your stomach. Now, you're going to be like, wait a minute, you got tested negative and how come you're talking about that you're COVID? Well, I know I have COVID or I had COVID because next day my wife got tested and she got positive. So, okay, well, uh, you know, you're close to your wife. There is no way she has COVID with the same symptoms and I don't. And the reason that my test came back negative is because... <laughs> I didn't actually know myself. I had to look it up. The false positive rate is up to 40 to 50 percent. So it's basically not any different than flipping a coin. So if they test, if they tell you that your test is negative, don't believe them. PCR is typically more, you know, a more solid test than a rapid antigen test. But those rapid tests are definitely not the best tests. Now, at this point, since my wife got positive, I automatically considered myself positive and I put myself in the isolation, didn't go to work, I finished my 10 days and I am now fairly asymptomatic and I'm ready to go work in a day or two. So, what other symptoms I got? Well, the nausea actually was supposed to be temporary, but with me, it did not go away. So I ended up prescribing myself dexamethasone and Zofran. And one of my pharmacist friends sent me some zinc, uh, vitamin C, and I also started taking some CBD oil, uh, which I believe helped me because I found studies that actually CBD can help uh, lower the proliferation of the virus in your system. So remember, one of the reasons people end up in the hospital is that they overreact to a virus. When the virus replicates itself 
very fast in a very fast uh, fashion. And then your body cannot catch up with it and your immune system catch up with that later, but gives an exaggerated response. That's why in some cases, that somatazone actually helps, uh, especially in the hospital, and they also use some other infusions of viral inhibitors to reduce the viral replication. So I believe the kids also don't have a severe disease, although there's a lot of hospitalizations and admissions right now, but still their rate of death is very, very small compared to older adults. And the reason is that their immunity is not as strong, or at least they don't give a super strong response. And actually, a super strong response by your immune system is not always the best. So Zofran and dexamethasone helped me a lot. Although I had some side effects with dexamethasone, it made me extremely irritable. Everything was making me angry, so I definitely cut back on my dexamethasone the next day. I was like, no, I'm not going to be that guy, the, the angry, irritable guy. I don't want to be that. So I cut back on the dose. Now, what is the most nasty side effect, or not the side effect, but the, the symptom of COVID. Well, you will know you have COVID if you lose your sense of smell and taste, because that is very pathognomonic. Now, sometimes if you get a flu, if you have a stuffy nose or something like that, you know, you may not be able to, you know, smell anything. But guess what? I couldn't even smell the shit of my own son. And when I change him, it smells, oh God, I can tell you. You probably know that if, you, if you're still changing. I did not smell anything, nothing. Even the strongest smells was nothing to me. Now, of course, when you don't smell, you don't taste well, so everything tastes blend. The problem with that is, although you may think that that's something, nothing, like nothing to worry about, but it is because sometimes that can be permanent. I know people who told me actually their sense of smell and taste did not come back months and months later. And what do you enjoy in life? Taste and smell is like probably at least 50% of it. If you lose that, especially if you permanently lose that, that is not something to be courageous of. So I'm telling you guys, please, if you are vaccinated, great. If you need to get a booster shot, great. Also, even if you are vaccinated, keep your mask on. Now, why people with vaccination still get the virus? Well, think like this. The vaccine will protect you like an umbrella. The umbrella will protect you in a drizzle right? It will still protect you if it is like raining a little bit heavier. But if there is a storm, that umbrella is not going to do anything too much. So what I did, I got into a perfect storm with a bunch of youngsters, probably carrying the virus, don't even have symptoms, swimming in the same pool, and you get it. It's a storm. Uh, even if your body is ready to the attack, if there is enough enemy, it will defeat your immune system. Now, you are going to recover faster and I did but still lost a lot of taste and smell had a lot of nausea almost vomiting bad diarrhea abdominal pain sore throat weakness tiredness all sorts of things happen so it's not something fun to just be courageous about and say oh well I'll just get the virus and move on and what's interesting is we have heard people who got the virus even up to three times and dying after the third infection that's horrible. So don't think that you will just get, catch the virus, get over it, and you'll be immune forever. That's not the case because the virus mutates. When the virus mutates, now we have the Delta and then the Lambda is coming. These waves, we are almost in the fourth wave, the fifth wave, sixth wave, unless as a whole community, whole humanity, we decide to go against this virus by vaccinating everyone and still wearing the mask. And that way, we can eradicate that virus by not allowing the virus to come into us. And we are the host. We are allowing the virus to grow. So we are feeding the enemy. That is not wise, guys. That's not good for anybody. Not for any reason. Not for any political reason. You have to have these vaccines. And you have to wear the mask at all times as much as possible. So, again, if you're not going to believe me and you want to just experience yourself, go ahead, but at the end of the day, guys, you are not just hurting yourself, you are probably hurting somebody else. Thank you guys for listening, and I'll see you hopefully in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this channel so far, and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it, and if you did, watch this video right there, I think that will help you too.